Hello, everybody. Uh, thanks for attending another webinar. Um, this is Chris Gilder, CEO and founder of Meridian. Um, we also have uh, Paul Bird, our director of software, uh, Melissa, who's running this again for us. And uh, I think we have a few more people joining from Meridian uh, shortly once they get off other calls. Um, so, Melissa, are you going to share the, the slide deck? Everybody should be able to see my screen, yes. All right, hang on a second. There we go. I was going to say I'm not seeing it, but I do now. All right, so we'll go to the first slide. Melissa, so guys, it's been taking about an hour. Uh, we're going to try and get through the, the deck as quick as we can to get to the questions, which seems to be where a lot of the focus needs to be. Uh, a little bit about Meridian. We've been doing self-service solutions for over 20 years, uh, partnered with some of the big guys out there, done a lot of different deployments. Uh, we actually do everything uh, from our headquarters in Aberdeen, North Carolina, about an hour south of Raleigh, right next to Pinehurst for any golfers out there. Uh, all the design engineering, conceptual designs done here. Um, our software team is based in Mississauga uh, from an acquisition we did of King Products and Solutions in around 2010. So that's where Paul and his team uh, work out of. Uh, obviously, all working out of the houses right now. Uh, we are ISO 9001-2015 certified facility. Um, we do manage all the, like I talked about, the design, fabrication. We actually do bend cut, powder coat, metal here in Aberdeen. Um, and some significant volumes, obviously, for this product as well. And uh, go to the next page. Uh, we also can do self-certify UL, uh, and this device is going through UL at the moment. Um, so what we're all here for, the personal management kiosk. Um, so we are shipping these now in the, basically the, the configuration that you see here, the freestanding unit. Uh, we've limited it to one SKU to start with. Uh, we do have thousands of these things going out. Uh, some of our early uh, deployments we have available as references. Uh, all of those early deployments are ordering more units, which obviously is good. And uh, so essentially what it does, as you guys are probably aware, um, verifies temperature within 0.5C, 0.9F. We're seeing it to be consistently more accurate than that, but that's our posted numbers. Uh, also does facial identification. Uh, you can store up to 30,000 people on the device uh, as they currently are standalone units. And obviously, as we'll get into in a little later, uh, we are tying those into our M0 Manage so they can all be remotely managed. Um, aluminum stand, um, and we do have the countertop configuration. We are waiting. The only thing we're waiting on there, guys, is for the battery pack uh, to finish with UL and get its final size so we can build the countertop size accordingly. Um, so we will have the countertop configuration available um, very, very soon. Okay, next slide. Uh, same thing here, the standard unit that's shipping now. Uh, the graphics you see on the right, we do have graphic templates available. Uh, we do have some very, we, we do graphics in-house at Meridian. Uh, for these particular, the first few thousand units going out, we are not providing the graphics just simply because that slows down the process. And uh, obviously people want to get these out as quickly as possible. Uh, but obviously you can do custom graphic wraps like you see here. And we're happy to pass you uh, people around the country that can do that for you. Next slide. Uh, countertop one we mentioned earlier. Uh, again, the only the only reason this is not yet released is we are waiting for the battery array to go through final approval so we can get the final dimensions and to make sure that that will fit inside the uh, countertop unit and be concealed, obviously, from view. Uh, next slide. Uh, software, where most of the questions are typically. Uh, so each unit has got the uh, Android-based solution. We are working on the Windows solution as well. Uh, our software team, led by Paul, uh, are working on this um, pretty much constantly to tie it into the M0 manage back end and make some tweaks and updates to the software as we see fit and based on you know considerable client requests, uh, some of the features that we'll be adding in uh, future releases, um, some additional things that we've just added in the latest release. 
um, to the database that's on the unit, uh, which is where it currently resides. As we mentioned, can recognize up to 30,000 uh, faces in the database, and you currently do register those at the device. Um, it is FCC and CE certified, and we can get paperwork to anyone that needs that. Uh, we do have Wi-Fi connectivity and LAN connectivity on the unit, and it has the voice prompts, uh, obviously, to tell you, you know, to step forward, and if you're at the appropriate temperature, um, or if it's a stranger, or obviously if the temperature is too high, uh, it will also give a voice prompt and an alarm. Um, if you want to have the alarm on, you don't have to have that. You can toggle that off. Um, but the LED lights you see there will either light up green if everything's okay, or red if it's not. Next slide. Here's a screenshot of a part of the admin screens. Um, so body temperature here, you can toggle that on or off. If for some reason you don't want it, that seems to be the reason most people do want this. Um, <clears throat> we will be adding the functionality actually to toggle off um, the capture of a photograph with the facial recognition. Uh, that's been a request from a couple of very large clients who want to deploy a lot of these, <clears throat> and they just want to use them for the uh, temperature check. So that is something that we will be adding to the application uh, shortly. Um, you can have it in C or F, depending obviously where around the world you are. Um, you can set the alarm threshold here uh, out of the box. I think it's 37.3. I'm not sure what that equates to. Do you guys know 99.2, something like that? Uh, but you can change that um, to your own requirements. Um, and you can turn the alarm off, as I mentioned earlier, here on this screen as well. Uh, we do have mass detection. Um, so if you're requiring people to, to wear a mask and they don't have one on, it will remind them to put one on. Uh, it will also still do facial recognition with the mask on. Um, the, the device is in, incredibly accurate for facial recognition, not quite as accurate with the mask on, um, but still does a pretty amazing job at recognizing who it is uh, with the mask in place. Uh, stranger mode that we have, which obviously allows strangers to use the unit for a temperature check and that doesn't give the alert um, that it's a stranger and will activate the door or turnstile or lock or whatever you have in this thing, activate. Uh, next mode. So here you see a little bit of the uh, data in the back end. Um, this is where you set up um, for the facial recognition. Very, very quick and easy to do for the initial setup. Um, we set up about 70 employees in that's probably 15 minutes or so. Um, very, very quick and easy. Obviously, you do have to type in the information. Um, so the name, uh, type, i.e. staff, visitor, vendor, etc. cetera. Uh, expiration date, if you have vendors visiting um, earlier in the week or last week, we had Trump here working on one of our new lasers. Uh, just doing the regular service so we put them in there i think it was three days they were here um so obviously after the three days um it didn't allow them entry um if they obviously needed to extend that you can have an admin go in here and change that date very easy to do and it also stores a picture of the uh, person and uh, grabs the picture obviously for when they check in next slide So M0 Manage, um, which we've had obviously since our acquisition of 2010, obviously a lot of changes, a lot of updates along the way, uh, used currently for managing uh, both small and very large uh, self-service deployments. Uh, this is where all the reporting tools are. This is where you can manage your entire deployment. Uh, you can separate by country, by state, by location, by store number, et cetera and uh, basically keeps your whole network updated remotely. Um, obviously, custom reporting out of here. We have a lot of clients using this for billing purposes, um, how much use the units are getting, if a unit is down, if a card reader has failed, if a printer's out of paper, if a printer's low on paper, etc. cetera. Um, so we're building a version of this right now, skimmed down version of this, um, obviously for these units, which have a limited functionality compared to a fully configured self-service device that could have bill acceptors and uh, change dispensers and credit card readers and multiple printers and card dispensers. This obviously is much simpler than that, so it doesn't need all of those features. 
And next slide. All right, so we get to the meat of it now, the questions. Uh, we couldn't get through all the questions um, last uh, webinar. Um, hopefully we'll get to all of them today. Um, but I know we have another record number of attendees today, so we'll jump straight into these because uh, this took most of the uh, webinar last time. All right, Melissa. All right. The first question says, regarding the Wigand data, do you have a Wigand input for a reader or is the Wigand data generated from the saved faces? It's, uh, hi, this is Paul Burton. Paul, uh, yeah, uh, I'll take that. So. The uh, system uh, is uh, going to output the results of the scan. So uh, it'll transmit that out uh, through a Wigand uh, connection. Uh, there is a, an optional card reader option which you can order, but you have to custom order that. So you'd have to talk to a sales rep in order to arrange that. It, there's some limited types of cards that are supported, uh, primarily MyFair cards. Okay, thanks, Paul. The next question says, we are in a warm environment in Florida. How flexible is the device to people coming in from outside where the temperature may reach 90 degrees or more? Um, I'm not sure if they're, if they're talking about the temperature inside the building, outside the building, the body regulates its temperature fairly quickly. Um, we're seeing a really a matter of seconds before we're getting the, the, an accurate read. Um, same with obviously any temperature device. Um, I know we've done tests with with gyms, uh, people working out and then getting their temperature retaken. Um, the temperature it's reading from from the body seems to be fairly accurate, um, even after someone coming out from extreme cold, extreme heat. Um, certainly within the in the range that we've uh, talked about earlier. If the temperature inside the building is fluctuating, um, that's where you can get inaccurate readings really from any temperature sensing device or non-contact device. So if you've got a unit that's pointing at a, a window or an oven or a laser or, or some piece of industrial equipment where the temperature can start ranging from um, you know 70 degrees to over 100 degrees back down 70 degrees that can cause some issues. Uh, the easiest way of, of negating that is just turning the device away from those heat sources and uh, pretty much instantly you go back to getting an accurate reading. So deployment, you do need to bear that in mind, uh, just as we do for outdoor kiosk installs. You typically don't want them pointing all day at the sun, um, although we make devices that are able to do that no problem. It's just good practice to not do that. So the same thing here. In a stable environment, air-conditioned environment, obviously you don't have that issue at all. Um, but if you're referring to temperature in a building, uh, stability is key. Otherwise, you will have to do, you know, multiple calibrations, uh, which is something you want to avoid. Next question asks about the current lead time. Uh, current lead time, I think we're saying four weeks. Uh, again, hoping to bring that in. Uh, we did get, obviously, um, really, uh, our, our initial forecasting for the unit was, was far exceeded within, you know, a few days of the launch. Some of our larger partners obviously have launched it as well with all their resellers. Um, so we expect to be back at a stable standpoint. Uh, we're currently able to do about 500 a day. We are looking to increase that to 1,000 a day. Um, right now, next week's gonna be a big shipping week for us where we should get the majority of the current orders out um, as some of our parts that we use to build this uh, have been delayed. Uh, with air shipments uh, out of China for our custom board uh, that we have developed for this, um, which has been a problem. And obviously that's been a problem for just about anyone bringing stuff in from overseas. All the PPE equipment has been taken um, preference on the flight, which obviously is, is expected. And um, But next week, I know we have a few thousand shipping out um, which should get us caught up, and we're saying four weeks, but again, we're hoping to bring that in pretty significantly, and within the next four to six weeks, um, be ahead of orders where we actually can potentially have some inventory on hand for smaller quantities. 
The next question asks um, for a list of distributors. Uh, that is something that we've talked about posting on the site, and we probably need to get to that, Melissa, for the, the page. So keep an eye on the page. Um, there's this significant, I mean, Staples, um, we have got CDW, we've got, I mean, there's, there's a lot of them, so I don't want to start reeling them off and miss some people out. Um, HP, obviously, a big one there. So um, keep an eye on that page, and we'll look to start adding those. Uh, you can reach out, obviously, to the sales team. I know they're 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 working as fast as they can to answer all these hundreds and hundreds of inquiries that are pouring in. Um, but keep an eye on the product page on the Meridian site. And I know we'll send that link out uh, within an hour or two after this. You'll also get a copy of, of uh, this uh, presentation, a recorded copy, so you can kind of go back to it as needed. Um, but we will post all that information on that on that page. The next question asks about the width of the freestanding unit uh, and the bottom of the base as well. Can the base be removed to adapt on top of turnstiles? Yes, it can be. Um, so it can be bolted straight to a turnstile. We can give you that cut uh, DXF. Um, so if you're mounting it to existing structure or straight to a turnstile, we can provide that for you. Um, just fill out the form on the page. Uh, if you've already done it, I'd encourage you to just to do that again, get you to the top of the heap. Uh, with that question, we'd be happy to send you the DXF cut file for that. And the width of the base is 19 inches, I believe. Yeah, I think that's posted on the page as well, sorry. It is, yeah. The next question says, if we have larger opportunities, is someone from Meridian able to join conference calls to answer questions from end users that might have additional questions? Great question. And yes, so all day, every day, um, we've got, well, not only the sales team, the marketing team, uh, we even have some of the accounting team and other, the service team um, helping on calls. Um, so we're certainly happy to do that if if we can fit that in obviously this is why we're doing the webinar so we can talk to hundreds of people at once um but yes we are doing that and obviously doing that as best we can um again just just fill out the request um and someone will will get back to you and, and book that um but yes we are doing that on a daily basis the next question asks if the device is able to take temperatures if it is offline Yes, the device works. <clears throat> Essentially, everything works um, if it's offline. I, you're not on Wi-Fi. You're not connected to the network. Um, the database is, is all local, um, so they are designed to be used standalone. Uh, the next phase, obviously, is tying it into M0 Manage, which is coming in the coming weeks, um, and that obviously will everything will be ready to do that. Even the unit shipping today uh, are ready to go online. Uh, there may be a small update that will be done or needs to be done at the unit, which is very simple to do. It has a USB um, port, so you can do the update. So, uh, yes, it will take temperature and work uh, not on a network. Next question is, what version of the Android operating system does the device use and how are updates done? Uh, updates are currently done locally at the device. Obviously, that will all be done through Manage. Um, we have, I think, Paul, we have a, an older version that we're currently using uh, just because we obviously everything we've got working is very stable in that. Is there plans to update that, Paul? Well, uh, we're using 721, which is still a, a supported version of Android, so we will be carrying that one forward with patches and that. So uh, it, it is up to date yeah. and uh, we'll be updating it as needed. Perfect. Thank you. Next question asks, when is the Windows version going to be available and how will updates be done to that version? So same way, uh, another great question. That's something that the team's working on. We're actually working with Intel on that. Um, I have great support from, from the Intel team. And uh, we're hoping that that will be done within uh, Paul, probably a couple of months, maybe a little bit longer, um, depending on obviously how things flow. Uh, but the updates on that device will be you'll be able to do that locally or you'll be able to do that through the m0 manage platform and most of our deployments with self-service devices are windows based 
And uh, so there'll be a lot more flexibility that we have to tie in existing applications and other functions and features uh, with the Windows version when we release that. The next question asks if the unit includes battery and casters. Uh, no, they're both options, and uh, as I mentioned earlier, we're just waiting for the battery to get through UL or, or get the final spec uh, on the UL approved battery, uh, which will fit inside lithium battery, which will fit inside the pedestal, um, and that will give you anywhere from 11 to 16 hours. I'm not sure the size exactly we've settled on, but at least 11 hours of runtime. And uh, and the casters are an option as well. We we're just not listing them right now. Again, we're just trying to get one skew. Um, just to keep the assembly process as, as lean as possible, as fast as possible. Um, but casters will be an option in the future. The, the unit is fairly light anyway, so it's quite easy to move around. Um, certainly if you have a hand truck, very, very easy to move around. Um, but yes, casters will be an option and that will be posted on the site as soon as that is a bolt-on uh, addition. The next question is if there will be a wall mount option available. Yes. And I'll get some more details on that from the engineering team. Um, I think that's already all been done. Uh, again, just kind of limited it to the one SKU right now. Obviously, there's larger opportunities for wall mount, countertop, uh, turnstile mount. Uh, we'll accommodate those kind of on a one-on-one -on -one basis, uh, which we're already doing. Um, so we are shipping units for larger deployments uh, with some custom mounting solutions that we've built. Um, but for right now, we have the one skew with the freestanding pedestal and countertop. The next, Sorry, the next question asks if the kiosks are available in Canada or only in the United States. Uh, another good question. So as we get the UL wrapped up on the device itself, so we have quite a few different UL projects going on right now. We, we, we are a UL self-certified facility. Um, but because this device is new and not on our list of devices that we can badge here, um, we're working with UL to get this done. So once that's done, then obviously it, it can be deployed in Canada, no problem. The power supply is UL, CUL approved. Um, it is only a 12 volt solution. So you would just need to check obviously with, with your own compliance team if you're able to deploy it there. Our software team is in Canada. There are units in Canada, um, but obviously, you know, the CUL um, is a critical part that is being worked on. The next question says, can you load the users into a portal in order to pre-populate the employee information? Uh, not currently. So you do it at the device um, right now. Um, but the M0 Manage will will make all that possible and will make it possible, obviously, for multiple units to share the same database. And uh, that's what Paul and the team are working on um, right now to, to you know, be able to do all this remotely. The next question is, how tall is the pedestal? Melissa, do you have that spec handy? I think it's on the, uh, I yeah, it's it's on the six page. It's 60.5 inches. Is that the top of the pedestal or the top of the unit? I think that's the top of the unit. Yeah, I think the top of the unit is 60. I think the pedestal is uh, 50, right at 50, I believe. I, I believe there's a drawing on there. If not, we'll certainly add that. So that would be good to add to the page if there isn't one, just a schematic with the dimensions. Okay, we can add that. Uh, the next question asks if this can be used in an outdoor setting. Uh, not designed for outdoor use. Obviously, we do have a lot of outdoor solutions. This isn't one of them. Uh, we have successfully tested it outdoors in a controlled environment, meaning uh, under cover without direct sun. Direct sunlight, uh, well, one in the camera or across the face, um, makes it difficult for facial recognition. And uh, and also, obviously, can can... Uh, giving correct readings with the temperature. If it's completely under the shade and outdoors in a stable environment, it, it seems to work fine. Again, it's not designed for outdoor use. Um, I, I don't know anyone using them outdoors, uh, certainly not in a permanent outdoor setting. We, they're not designed, nor would we recommend them for permanent outdoor setting. Um, but in a controlled outdoor um, for doing, you know, 30 minutes of, of check-in, and you're not getting any sun on someone's face or on the device, um, there should be no problem. But again, you'd need to evaluate that. 
The next question asks the accuracy of the temperature readings. Yeah, so it's a 0.5C, 0.9F, and as I mentioned earlier, we're, we're seeing more uh, better accuracy than that. Um, we do have a, a, a hospital that is a, a kind of a demo site for us, as well as a reference for us, um, that's seeing you know some great results as well. Uh, in fact, I, I saw I think a news article came out about that hospital uh, today using our device, and again, they're wanting more units as soon as we can get them to them. Um, so it's, uh, you know, we are seeing a good uh, accuracy uh, range if deployed, um, like we said, away from not pointing directly at uh, very hot uh, changing heat sources. The next question asks if you can use the device for temperature verification only without the facial recognition. Um, not currently, but we are making that change. So we do we do have a client that's requested that, and we'll honor that request. So I think that Paul is that that's very early on the roadmap um, to have that toggle off. So they were looking really just to use it as a temperate device and not capture any image. That's right. Uh, we're also looking at some uh, potentially some some interesting technology to encrypt the image as well, um, but we will be able to toggle that off in a future release. I don't have the date on that, but that will be a future release option. The next question asks when M0 Manage will be released, if we are still on schedule for a May release. Uh, Paul, I'll let you tell. I mean, M0 Manage obviously is, is, is already out there, but the, the version for this um, device, Paul, what are we still on track? Yeah, we'll have some functionality available May 29th, so we'll be starting to onboard customers then. Okay, perfect. The next question asks the cost of the unit. Um, I think the retail, the MSRP is, is it 3150 mm -hmm. Okay, 3150 I know that... Um, I guess the street retail price is a little bit less than that with our resellers and distributors, but that's the MSRP. The next question asks if we have cloud storage for this. Uh, that's coming to Paul's point on the uh, 29th of this month. We will have all of that available. The next question asks if multiple devices can share the same database. Uh, yeah, so same same thing. When once we have the M0 manage integration complete, um, which I know we have running in the lab uh, and on site here, um, that will all be available. The next question asks if we have a list of compatible entry systems. Uh, that's also something we're working on. So we actually have units in the hands of, of some of our partners in that area. Um, with it having the Wigand and also we have some uh, relays on there, um, just about everything we feel will be compatible, uh, but we do have that in the hands of some partners. So we will compile a list and uh, we've had a lot of inquiries from manufacturers of different control mechanisms, control systems um, that are anxious to be on that list. Uh, so we do have some support from those guys doing their own testing as well. And then, Paul, I guess to further that, when our APIs are available on the on the back end side, uh, they can do a little bit more deeper integration into the software systems out there as well. Is that correct? That's right. Yeah. Uh, so the web-based uh, REST interfaces that uh, would be able to be connected to other systems. So you're welcome to uh, uh, connect anything uh, that can speak in REST to our services. Thanks. Next. The next question asks if the unit will will be able to send a text alert when there is a high temperature. Yes, it will. So again, once we have it into the uh, M0 Manage, which M0 Manage already does all that, so it sends out email alerts, text alerts um, for you know systems down, different alerts that people may want to have, and that's all customizable too in the M0 backend. So you can set up different numbers, different emails, email groups. Uh, different severity of of uh, alerts and obviously who they go to, what departments they go to. Uh, you can even tie in um, instructions um, and documents in those alerts as well. The next question asks if you can get an extended warranty beyond the one-year warranty. 
we we're not currently offering that although we we do have um we do have that available on most of our products i'm sure that will be available on this one right now it just has the one year return to depot um, and then we have different service level agreements for next day on site four hour response time parts pool programs etc uh, the standard warranty currently is is the one year return to depot but i'm sure that will be available and we will post that on our product page uh, as soon as all that's firmed up the next question asks if you can include screening questions on the tablet uh, another great question and that's one that's been asked a lot so in the future yes right now no uh, so it's a very um distinct you know um i guess product meaning the facial recognition temperature check is really all it's been designed for to this point but yes that will be something we'll be doing uh, we'll have a lot more flexibility um, on the window side uh, just because we have a lot of existing applications and technology that we can tie into that pretty much immediately but that is something that we're being asked to do and that will be something that we will uh, do in the future as we build a whole product set around this uh, technology the next question asks how long meridian has been distributing these devices and what types of businesses we are working with oh gosh uh not long and thousands of different businesses so the product now has been shipping only for i think four to five weeks um so we initially launched it to some of our um i guess uh longer term customers uh for initial beta testing which went very well which was about, I guess, six weeks ago or so. Um, and then we started selling directly to our clients and we obviously partnered with some of our larger um, clients that have sent it out you know, to all of their network. So, I mean, it's literally thousands of different businesses from everything you can imagine, from hotels to hospitals, to the, the banking industry, um, sports, um, We've got NBA teams. I mean, it, it, it's everything you can imagine um, as we talk about the new norm and, you know, taking the temperature, unfortunately, seems like it's going to be the part of the new norm, um, which also will help. I mean, some of the feedback from the hospitals we've worked with are excited about, obviously, what's going on with COVID-19 will certainly help um, stem some of, like, the flu epidemic that we get every year and things like that. So been shipping now for about five to six weeks um really at full steam the last three and um but it's i mean it's with every kind of industry and, and customer you could imagine and again all of the early customers we were trying to limit to one to two units initially um we are obviously now any size order is fine um, the larger orders in the thousands uh, we'll typically quote a custom delivery date there, so not necessarily the full week, although we are able to get them out typically within that same lead time. And uh, But yeah, and every, everyone that we sent to with the initial, I would say 30, 40 sites, uh, all wanted more as soon as we can ship them. And we're in that situation now. We've got a lot of clients out there, you know, that have had initial orders and, and want more. So we're ramping up production as quickly as we can again we're trying to get to the thousand a day mark currently we can we can physically do 500 a day um hopefully in in three to four weeks we'll be at a thousand a day and obviously if we need to ramp up further from there we can certainly do so the next question asks about payment terms such as prepay or net 30 upon delivery uh we have a lot of net uh 30 clients um we have standard terms is 50 50 um 50 percent upon order 50 percent before they ship um if you've got obviously a, a sheet you can send in uh, as you can imagine we're literally getting inundated uh, with people asking for terms um but standard is 50 50 and obviously there's no checks needed there we, do, we just get a, a purchase order a deposit and then we invoice a few days before they ship and then they go the next question asks if there are reports available through a web interface. There will be, yep. Right now you do it on the device, but um, all of that will be available with the M0 Manage, which obviously is available now with self-service deployments, but will be available for this device um, by the end of this month. 
The next question asks, what is the distance required from the actual camera to the face of the person in order to read the proper temperature from the face? Uh, there's a little bit of flexibility. It doesn't have to be exact. Paul, do you know exactly what that the ideal range is? But I, I know it's, was it two feet? Between, yeah, one to three or four feet even. So, okay. you know, one to three feet, yeah, I'd it, say. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's pretty flexible. You don't have to be exact. The next question asks, is the, is the standard unit direct powered? Yeah, so it's just a standard 110 outlet. Obviously, ones that we're shipping abroad will have the appropriate plug because um, it's a, you know, obviously the power um, supply can go to multiple uh, countries with just the different IEC cable. Um, so, yeah, regular plug, and then we will have the battery uh, operated ones well available as soon as we can get this battery through UL. The next question asks if facial recognition is off. Will the kiosk still recognize mask detection if masks are required for entry? Uh, I believe so. I don't know if I'd personally tip. Paul, do you know if, if that, I believe it does. But was that something that we just need to verify and test? Yeah, so masks in uh, guest mode? Yeah, that, so that's if, if, you yeah, so if you have it in guest mode, um, it will record entry, but it will also try to enforce mask uh, detection okay. before entry. Okay, yep. thank you. The next question asks if there is an option to not store temperature information or is all information stored? Currently, Paul, I think currently everything is stored, but that is, that is all the things that we are looking to toggle on and off. Um, in in future versions is that correct that's right yeah it's a frequently asked uh one is uh to eliminate all recordings so uh we're also going to uh look at time-based uh, deletion so uh it can be uh every so many hours or on request uh so there'll be a delete button where you can go in uh on a schedule uh periodically and delete all the data that's on the device. So it will come in stages. Uh, we'll give more updates as the releases become available. The next Thanks. question says, they saw that the thermal chip is NDAA compliant, but they want to know if the camera is also NDAA compliant. Paul, have you got information? I know we're having those discussions now. Um, Uh, Do you this have is any the uh, there National there? Defense <laughs> Authorization Act. Yeah, there, we looked into the technology that's gone into this device, uh, uh, the details of the chips, and none of the um, the components are are listed on the uh, the NDAA. Oh, the blacklist. Yes, yeah, sorry, blacklist, I, was, yeah. I was thinking. Yeah. Of the, uh, I was thinking of the privacy thing that we're we're diving into now. That could be something uh, else. I assume that that's yeah, what okay, they're talking no, about. Not, yeah. The manufacturers of of the devices are not on that blacklist good question the next question asks what reports will be available through m0 manage uh really just custom reports of all the data that's captured so for this particular device capturing obviously facial recognition so if that's a registered employee um their name obviously their are they staff is it a visitor id number which is also put in uh, when registering them and their temperature. So date ranges, any of those uh, you know, pieces of data can be reported on. Um, you'll be able to get graphs and things of obviously when the busier times are, if this is just a building, an office building, residential building, which again, these are going into, um, you'll be able to just build your own reports based on the data that's being captured. So very flexible and a very powerful reporting tool, uh, obviously that's already in M0 Manage. The next question asks if the unit can be tied via Bluetooth to a full-size keyboard. There is yes. a Bluetooth uh, antenna inside, so I assume that's the case. Yeah, yeah, and you can, obviously there's USB, so you could put a Bluetooth dongle on the USB if you wanted to do it that way. I know the, unit, the units are shipping um, with a keyboard and mouse until we can get caught up on the 
uh, the all-in-one keyboard with the three mouse button um, because you get into the admin screen with the middle mouse button with the admin password um, so that's included with the units uh, but you can hook up um, a Bluetooth keyboard to the unit um, by going in obviously into the Android uh, OS. The next question asks if the unit requires calibration if so how is this done? Uh, it can be calibrated, so we, it's calibrated kind of out of the box, um, again, to go in a, a typical uh, air-conditioned environment, so office building, retail, housing, uh, et cetera. If it's going into a, an extreme temperature one way or the other, um, you can calibrate it to offset that. So we would recommend, and we will be uh, providing, or you may already have them, um, a calibration tool. Um, which is basically a, a heat source that's set to a specific temperature that you can calibrate at. So if it is going into an environment that isn't your typical climate control, 72 degree or, or whatever degree um, that your office is set at, then calibration may be required. Um, we're seeing good results in various settings. I mean, there's certain places in our local hospital has the device where it's much hotter than other areas and they seem to be getting very good readings wherever they put them. Um, it's more of if it's in an area that has got rapidly changing heat sources, that's where you can have some issues and would have to do more calibrations. And it's probably easy just to put it in a place where it's not, you know, um, facing something that's up and down constantly with, with uh, different heat readings. The next question asks if an external card reader can be added to the unit. Um, Paul, I know we've been playing around with that a little bit, and I think we'll have some of that available. Right now, there's an internal contactless reader that is available as an option. Um, what are your thoughts, Paul, on, on future expansion? I know printers has been a batch print has been a big question asked a lot, and uh, but external card readers. Yeah, we'll be able to make those uh, kinds of uh, additions in our Windows uh, version, which will be released uh, hopefully within the next two months. So there'll be a lot of options for uh, things like printing, as you said, and uh, uh, additional readers and access interfaces and things like that. Yeah, and if, if, if the opportunity is, is large enough, we can look at, and obviously it's, a, it's an Android compatible uh, reader, we can have our Android team and Paul take a look at that to see if it's something that we could, you know, uh, program into the system. Um, so we will just take that on a case by case basis for now. The next question asks, who will the end user call for tech support? So standard um, warranty, they will call into our service team, um, which is uh, 8.30 to 5.30, five days a week. We do have 24 seven support available. Um, that would be an additional SKU, um, which is, again, standard for all of our devices that we have out there. Uh, we have thousands and thousands of technicians around the country, so on-site support is available as well. Um, but standard is 8.30 to 5.30, five days a week at Meridian. Uh, we're also building out a significant um, kind of knowledge base uh, just because the, the sheer demand for this and inbound uh, questions for this is, is is absolutely massive, even for some of our partners that you know have got thousands and thousands of of resources answering questions. Uh, we're building out a portal that will answer just about any question. Have lots and lots of videos. Uh, we'll also be shipping the units with our um, Spout technology, uh, which is a QR code that will go on the back that you can scan with a handheld device and it will literally link you to every video to do anything and everything on that device, including all the support information, et cetera. Um, so that will be on the back of each unit. The next question asks if you can use office mode and guest mode at the same time. Paul? Yeah, I office believe mode. they mean employee, uh, yeah, empl guest and employee mode or, uh... Yeah. Are, mm -hmm. yeah, are uh, able to be used in conjunction. So if you have uh, guest mode enabled, then anyone can pass. Uh, if you have somebody that's already in the face database, 
as an employee, uh, they will also be able to pass. It will recognize them and provide the name uh, in the in the pass uh, entry uh, history. So, yes. The next question asks if these units can be purchased directly from Meridian. Uh, sure. I mean, if obviously we're we're very very conscious of of all of our partners. So obviously, if you heard of it through one of the partners, then we would definitely point you towards them. And the pricing um, that they provide is, is has been very aggressive. Um, but yes, we obviously have a, a very very large database of customers that have been buying products for us for well, some for 20 years plus. So uh, it is possible. But again, if if you heard of it through one of your uh, salespeople at one of our resellers distributors would certainly, uh, you know, push you through that channel. The next question asks about recommended practices for cleaning the kiosks. Melissa, you want to take that one? I know we've got a document around that. Is that document available on the uh, on the site? And obviously, this is a this really isn't a, a touch unit, or it's not a touch screen, but you can move the screen up and down. Um, so we have a best practices, uh, a lot of our partners, touchscreen partners to have contributed to that. So, uh, we'll post that on the site. If it's not already on the product page, well, we'll post it on there. Is, is there somewhere on the site that that's already posted, Melissa? We do have it on the site. Um, it's in the blog section, but I can add that to the product page as well. Okay. So just, it's in, like I said, you can grab it from the blog section. There's a lot of detail on there. A lot of different products that can be used. Um, so take a look at that. The next question asks if these need to be plugged, unplugged every night. Uh, no, they do not. The next question asks if evaluation units or test units are available. Uh, unfortunately, not now. So um, we just literally, uh, everyone that we get available is going out the door very quickly. Um, we've suggested and, and have had um, people buying onesie twosies as test units, um, and uh, which obviously has had a phenomenal response to. Um, we are allowing um, people to the showroom. Uh, occasionally, there's only one unit in there because um, we have people really screaming for these. So we're, we're using obviously our units in the back, and any spare units in the showroom are getting pulled occasionally. Um, there's always one up there and uh, we can set a visit. We had a client in here, I think yesterday, um, actually drove about 700 miles out here to look at the unit because uh, their flights kept getting canceled. So that is available. Um, the, the facility is locked down. Um, we do have, like I mentioned, we do have the ability to do a control visit. Uh, masks are available. Obviously the temperature scanner is, is there to take temperature. And then we have limited, um, uh, meeting space for someone to check it out in person. The hospital here is also allowing visitors to see their unit, obviously in a controlled environment too, in a hospital, um, but we do not have any uh, demo units. The next question asks how you get photos into the system. Does someone have to be at the device to register initially? Yes, so someone to be at the device with, with the keyboard and uh, it's very, very quick and easy. It takes about, gosh, eight to 12 seconds per person, depending on how quickly someone types, quicker if they're fast. Um, it's a very quick process. Um, as we get to M0 Manage, Paul, I think we can, obviously an existing database could be, could be used for the unit, so you wouldn't have to register at the device itself. Um, but obviously you still need a good quality uh, image of the face in order to do uh, the facial recognition. So right now it's done at the device. You can have the admin there. Obviously they need the password to get in, go to the registration, and you can literally just have one person after the other, um, you know, coming up and getting registered. The next question asks if the unit has any way to track how many people are turned away for a high temperature. Yeah, so it's keeping the data. Um, so you can look in there at that. Paul, is that, is that, does it capture um, every scan or every uh, shot? Yeah, yeah. So if uh, they're denied entry, it does record that information. Okay, thanks. 
The next question asks if the kiosk allows for scanning people of all heights, including those in wheelchairs. Yeah, so we actually, we reduced the size of the stand to 50 inches right around there, I believe, and we'll, we'll put the dimensions on the page if it's not already there um, to accommodate that. So we did testing of a person in a wheelchair at our facility and, um, and actually at the hospital facility. Uh, in fact, they were one of our beta testers and they gave us some feedback to, to make this pedestal slightly shorter. Obviously, they have a lot of patients in wheelchairs uh, that they use this device for. Um, so this really gets everyone from someone in a wheelchair to, I don't know, the tallest person, so it's 6'5", um, and obviously taller. So the, the nice thing with having that range uh, that Paul mentioned earlier, um, you don't all have to be, you know, 12 inches from the unit. You've got a bit of a range there. So yes, it captures uh, all heights. We are working with the NBA, some NBA teams. Um, they're probably going to have to angle the screen up for some of their players, but the screen does adjust, and uh, so you can adjust it accordingly if if uh, someone is extremely tall um, or someone that you know may be in a in a you know children's wheelchair or something like that. The next question asks if personnel information is local to each machine. How do multiple devices work together? So currently it is. So if you had multiple devices, you would need, and you wanted everyone to be able to scan in on every device, you would have to register each one individually, which we know is a pain, and uh, which is why obviously we're we're bringing M0 Manage to the table with this. Um, so you won't have to once the M0 Manage piece is in place. Um, you would register once or register in the back end if your systems, if your information is already in there, and be able to use any devices on the network. The next question asks how heavy the devices are. Do you have that, Melissa, by chance? Yeah, they're, the freestanding is 35 pounds. 35 pounds, okay, thanks. The next question asks, what is a setup you would recommend to maintain privacy or HIPAA compliance? Uh, another good question. So we're actually working with our legal team on some of that, and you would need to kind of check with with your compliance teams or consultants. Um, several things obviously that, that could be a concern there, the recording of the data, which again, we are making where that can be toggled on and off. I do believe also, Melissa, I saw some conversation around privacy filters for the screen itself. Although with it being only an eight inch screen, it's, it's quite private, but um, a privacy filter could be attached so you don't see, um, you know, the the alert on the screen or whatever's on the screen from the sides um, but that is something that you would need to uh, talk to your your either internal HIPAA compliance team um, or get some uh, consultation around that we will get um, a statement at some point around that but again it varies from company to company the next question asks what type of APIs we are planning for the software Paul, I'll let you grab that one. Yeah, so there'll be REST APIs that'll be available through our online services. So we'll publish a document on how to integrate with those services. Okay. The next question asks how the information is stored and backed up. Paul, I'll let you grab that one too. I know locally, obviously right now it's all local. Yeah, it's all um, local, and in uh, and in manage, it will be stored in an encrypted form in a database that is segmented for each client. So they'll have their own separate database and segmentation, and uh, it's an encrypted form. It's also encrypted in transport. Okay. The next the next question asks about the cost of M zero manage. Uh, right now, it's it's 295. MSRP is 295 per year per device. Um, that's quantity one. So we do have a couple of very large deployments going out. Obviously, the rate is much much low. We don't have that published pricing yet. We will be getting that out to all of our distributors and resellers uh, certainly this month before we release it. Um, but for one unit to be managed remotely, uh, the MSRP is at 2.95 per year. Okay, and this will probably be our last question. We're coming up on the top of the hour. 
Um, but the last question is, in guest mode, does it record information? Do guests have to enroll? Paul, guest you want to grab that one? I believe yeah. it does, apparently. Yeah, it, it records uh, all entry passes. So as anyone passes through, it will record the occurrence of the um, entry. Um, however, you can turn the guest mode off and have it only record um, employees. Uh, if you do have guests and allow them through, then it will record. They don't need to set up anything in advance, though. The guests uh, will just be allowed uh, if they pass the, the temperature scan and uh, the face is uh, able to be found by the camera. Okay. Okay. This one last thing, Melissa, I had actually someone contact me, or a couple of contact me. So for existing clients that have M0 Manage, which we have obviously quite a lot, um, you will be able to use your existing M0 Manage to manage these devices uh, once we turn that feature on. Um, Paul, I know we're making some significant um, updates, I guess you would call it, or, or streamlining a few things for these devices too. So would they have the option of, of using kind of that new portal or can they choose to use the current one that they have? Yeah, it, it would be either or. So they could use a new portal or continue to use the existing one. So uh, where okay. they already have devices connected, so they'll, they'll get a choice. Perfect. All right, well, thanks everybody, and thanks to the Meridian team again. Um, we will get this out. Melissa, what's the, when, when will you send this out to everybody? The recording of the webinar goes out two hours after the webinar. Awesome. All right, so um, again, thanks to everyone. I uh, will take advantage of a few minutes before the top of the hour. Um, everyone take care, be safe out there, and hopefully we'll chat soon. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.